Hello and welcome to the Dream Team Professor podcast. My name is Scott and in this episode we're looking at the top players to target for the final of Euro 2024 around the Dream Team fantasy football game. Now it's going to be a bit of a different one because we literally just have two teams to choose from Spain versus England in the final and there's a few different ways we can approach this depending on how you're doing in your mini leagues, how you're doing in the overall rankings and what your team looks like at the moment. So we're going to start by just looking over a few things to know. So we've got five transfers going into this match. 7 p.m. deadline on Sunday. So as always, one hour before the kickoff. Uh, Spain are the bookies' favourites after beating France. The projections from Rob T. FPL on Twitter. Um, He does really nice graphics on Twitter with the market odds. Um, 59% Spain win. So they are heavy favourites at the minute. 59% chance of Spain winning, 41% chance of England winning. That is to win the final. Uh, Spain goals projected at 1.18 and England's at 0.98. So pretty close to both teams to score, it looks like there. Um, Just under one for England and then over one for Spain. Clean sheet odds, Spain 38% and England 31%. So Spain edging it in just... Um, all the metrics really, but it looks like it's going to be a tight one. Um, let us know in the comments below how you think this one is going to go. Uh, part of the the head part of me says that Spain have been a load better than England throughout the tournament, but obviously, heart is telling us there is a chance for England here. Um, who scored predicted lineups on the screen? So I've got no arguments with this apart from one uncertainty. Um, so Simon in goal for Spain, Kukurea, Laporte, left back and left centre back. Le Normand back in at centre half after his suspension, and Carvajal back at right back after his suspension as well. No, no problems with that at all. Um, Navas is not going to be starting at right back. Danny Olmo still in in midfield ahead of Pedri, who's ruled out for the tournament, and Olmo has been incredible. Um, throughout the whole tournament, even when he wasn't starting. But even now that he is starting, still smashing it. Rodri and then Ruiz, who's had a brilliant tournament as well as the three-man midfield. And then the two deadly wingers, you've got Williams on the left-hand side and Yamal on the right with Morata through the middle. No complaints, and that's completely what I would be expecting from Spain. England, I think pretty much unchanged again, really. So Pickford in goal, back three. Or you could call it a five if you want, but the back, the three centre backs, I imagine they're going to stick with this again. Gehi, left back or left centre back, Stones, centre back, and then Walker, right centre back. Saka, sort of playing right wing slash right wing back. He's a bit of everywhere. And then the one question mark that I don't think anyone really knows the answer to yet is whether it's going to be Luke Shaw or Trippier as that left wing back. I think it's going to be Trippier, unless. He's got some injury concerns, uh, but I've seen a lot of people say they'd like Shaw to start. Obviously played half each in that Netherlands game. I wouldn't be surprised if something similar happens. Um, Shaw definitely hasn't got 90 minutes in his legs, but maybe we start him, bring Trippier on, or the other way around. Rice and Mainu as the two sort of central midfielders sitting in front, uh, both been really, really good. And then Bellingham, Bowden playing just ahead of them behind Harry Kane up top. No, no arguments. I know people are saying, oh, see, you got to start Ollie Watkins because he done well, but you're not dropping Kane. You're not dropping Kane for a Euro 2024 final. Um, no chance. Maybe Watkins will come on, depending on how the game's going. But yeah, no no real arguments with anything in that lineup other than would Shaw start and would Trippier start. And for that reason, the uncertainty, probably wouldn't pick them. Um but we're going to come on to, we're going to just have a little look at how both teams got on in their match, who the top point scorers were from those two semifinals. And then I'm going to go through a couple of different scenarios. So how I'd pick my team if I was leading in a mini league or had a good rank, which I certainly don't at the moment uh, or, or won't have. And then another scenario, one that if you're trying to chase a little gap and then my scenario, if you've completely messed it up um, and you're doing a bit of a Hail Mary effort at the end. But yeah, I'm, I'm close to 
pretty much throwing the towel in. But yeah, hopefully you've still got stuff to play for at the minute. So we'll have a quick look first um, at ownership and most transferred in. You've got to take it with a pinch of salt again, because a lot of people for the most transferred in, you've got Murata up there in first, which at first glance looks surprising. But the reason he's up there is because not many people would have had him going into this um, final. A lot of people would have had the more popular picks. Um, the likes of Ruiz, Kukurea, Yamal, Omo, Olmo. Um, so people are just adding now just England and Spain players. You've got Harry Kane in second, which I thought more people would have had Kane at this point. But obviously a lot had Mbappe, 7.5 million. Walker in third, Kukurea in fourth, and then Yamal in fifth. Now, I think Yamal probably would have been a lot higher if people weren't already on him. Um, so looking at percentage owned, Bellingham is there at like 70 Point eight percent. This is this fluctuates. So it's, it's at the time that I've recorded this, but he is owned by the big bulk of the game. So if you are looking to try and defend your lead, uh, you do probably want to have him in there. Harry Kane, sixty six point six percent. I don't know why you would want to go without Harry Kane for the final, because it's really just him and Mata, uh, Morata to choose from. So yeah, even if you had one striker, I think Kane would be the one. Fabian Ruiz, 50%, so he's in half of teams currently, and he's actually gone off the boil a little bit the last couple of games, um, two pointers in each of his last two, but he was, I think he did come close to almost reenacting one of his earlier um, link-ups with Yamal in uh, that France game, him cutting input a cross in, and Ruiz almost got in the end of that. Kukurea, 46, so he's the highest owned Spain defender or defender between Spain and England. Um, I think a lot of that also would have come down to the fact that Kovhal was suspended in the last one. I think his ownership was pretty high um, and also the price at 3 million. Yamal, 4 million, 45.5. Olmo, 44.5. These two have been absolutely brilliant. Uh, and that's why they're in quite a lot of teams at the minute. Pickford, 43%. So the England keeper, more highly owned than Seabon. Saka, 38.9. Walker, 36.4. And then Morata, 31.5. But Obviously, he's taken a big jump this week. Let's look at England versus Netherlands. I'm not going to spend time talking about Netherlands now because these teams are eliminated. They did not make the final, like unlike England. Um, so 2-1 to England. Simons did get that goal early on. Great long-range effort. But I think the tale of the first half was how good England looked. I think it was the best half of football I've seen from England um, in this tournament. So Simons, obviously, with that early goal, which deflated us a little bit, um, I know pick, people have said that Pickford maybe could have done better, but I, th I do think that was just a really, really good strike. Uh, but then we equalised with controversial Harry Kane penalty. I don't think there was a penalty. I think it was a soft penalty. Uh, I know it divides opinion in our Dream Team Tonic Discord. It's divided opinion as well. Uh, but I don't think it was clear and obvious. And you could sort of tell that by the sort of VAR expert lady that they had um, coming in on the commentary. She didn't think it was going to be a penalty. I think the commentary team didn't think it was going to be a penalty. And then he was sent to the monitor um, and it was given. So I've got no arguments. I'll take that penalty all day long. Um, 10 points for Harry Kane in this one. I think Foden had the best game of the tournament or his best game of the tournament, uh, hitting the post with that long range effort. And then that Goal cleared off the line by Dumfries, who pretty much made up for giving away that that penalty. Um, he hit the crossbar himself, actually, Dumfries. So he had a pretty good game apart from giving away the penalty. Uh, but Foden was someone who I had as a differential. Still, to come away with four points felt harsh because he was so, so good in that game, I thought. Uh, didn't really reflect the Dream Team points. And he was taking quite a lot of set pieces as well. Obviously, him and Trippier sort of lined up together on a lot of the set pieces. And he sort of didn't know which one to take it, but obviously Foden giving that left left footed um, option. Uh, I mentioned Kane ten points, converted the penalty. I did have another long range shot um, early in that first half, I think. But other than that, I didn't think it was that convincing. Uh, but now he's on three goals, so joint most goals of the tournament. Saka, I thought was really good in the first half. Uh, someone who I did as a differential captain pick this week, and of course got a one pointer. Seemed pretty good for bonus, seemed pretty good for tackles in most game. Um, but he's ended up with two PPM, one point. 
in there, not good. I'm the curse. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be captaining uh, any England players. Um, but I thought he was really, really good in that first half. Uh, had that disallowed offside goal in the second, which was really, really close. But I do think that he faded off in that second half. Uh, you had Mainu, incredible performance. And again, dream team points don't really do it justice. Four points, one bonus, two tackles. But that is always a, a problem with this sort of defensive midfielders. Uh, but not many points at the back. So Trippier started this one. But like I said, subbed off at half time for Luke Shaw. Um, who will start? Let me know in the comments below if you think that Luke Shaw might be starting from the beginning. But I feel like Southgate just got, sticks to what's what's done okay. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they start Trippier, make the sub at half time, or depending on the situation of the game, maybe change things up. But that's that's what I'm thinking. Um, overall, though, I thought the only downside about the England defence, I thought we looked a little bit iffy from defending corners. Uh, obviously, like I said, Dumfries hit the crossbar with a header, and I think there was a few others that I was on edge for, but maybe maybe it was just the pressure of watching as an England fan. Um, Watkins and Palmer subbed on as a combination and combined for that dramatic late goal. So eight points for Ollie Watkins, four points for Cole Palmer. And you just got to give, well, we've been criticizing Southgate, um, myself and the boys on the tonic. And I think you have to, you have to give him credit for that substitution. Cause I, I didn't think he would do it. I did not think, I know a lot of people would have been saying, I'll oh, get Kane off for Watkins, but I didn't think that he would actually go and, sort of do that sort of move. The Palmer one, we've seen we've seen him bring Palmer on um, on quite a few um, occasions. But I think the decision to obviously take Foden off for Palmer as well, I think it was Foden, and then leave Bellingham on was a more surprising one because I thought Bellingham wasn't really in the game that much and Foden looked brilliant. But you have to say he got it right in this instance. Um, but I don't, I don't agree with... I've heard quite a few people saying the fans owe Southgate an apology for the earlier criticism. And I, I don't think that's true, really, because if a, if a player doesn't play well or a player makes bad decisions for three games prior, you can criticise them. But then if they have a good game, you can praise them. You, it doesn't mean that you were wrong the, the matches beforehand. Um, but credit to him. He's got us, he's got us to the final. Um, and I think he made some really, really good decisions here. But I still think you, you're within your rights to question um, some of the decisions earlier in the tournament. But overall, we're obviously happy that England are in the final. Hit the like button. Um, it will make us win in the final and it will help the channel. So if you could hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, um, that would do us a big favour. And we're all feeling very positive about England at the minute, I hope. Spain versus France, 2-1 to Spain. Obviously, now they are in the final two. Again, we won't talk too much about France, but I thought they were pretty disappointing. They took the early lead. And Mbappe causing problems for Navas. Uh, I had Navas in my team. Um, it never was going to end well, really. Early yellow card for him. Um, but Mbappe went on to assist a Mouani goal. But Spain pulled it back pretty quickly. Uh, took control of the match. With a Yamal go goal on the 21st minute, which was incredible from long range bending them in and i think i'd i think i'd said in a prior pod either my own or on the dream team tonic that obviously yamal had had quite a few assists he's on three assists already um he did sort of seem i said i seemed a bit surprised because you quite often you got like your likes of, of iron robin is the classic example someone that cuts in and always shoots from the left he was sort of doing that same cutting in and you couldn't stop it but he always seemed to put in that nice little cut inside cross rather than shooting uh, which we saw him combine with uh, Fabian Ruiz and score and almost doing again in this game but this one he just let fly and it was an amazing goal so 10 points for Yamal really exciting player um, and I can't say I'd watched much of him before this tournament so he's been brilliant uh, 10 points three assists and yeah I, I surely he's got to be in most people's teams um, for the final if they are still in the mix in their mini leagues or in the overall rankings. Brilliant, brilliant player. Uh, Olmo got um, a goal as well, which was another well-taken one. Again, he's been fantastic. So double figures for him, five um, PPM, one bonus, shot on target. Um, 
And he's had five attacking returns, so three goals, two assists. And it's just two. He's only had two starts. He started this one, and he started the Albania match when they rotated their entire team. So it's a, the fact that he's got five attacking returns is pretty incredible. Maybe you'd say he did pretty much get the full match for Germany because he subbed on early, but still. 48 points, uh, the highest scoring player left in the tournament. Now, I imagine that he's, if you're not going for Harry Kane, I imagine he's probably going to be the second most highly captain player, I'd imagine. Yeah, I'd probably say it's probably going to be Kane, Olmo, and then Yamal, if I had to predict how I think the captaincy um, selection will go this week. Morata, he grabbed an assist, got five points. He's on one goal, two assists for the tournament. Uh, obviously hasn't performed great in front of goal, but again, contributes a lot to the team playing centre forward. Um, does put a real shift in and his, his sub wasn't as early as it has been in some of the other matches. So off in the 76th minute, five points, um, solid performance. And then Fabian Ruiz. So like I said, he's over 50% owned now. Most popular player for Spain um, with 50% ownership. He's only blanked in his last two matches though. So, Obviously, a lot of people have gotten in because he started so strong with these attacking returns. And like I said, he was close to getting one in this match. Um, but maybe you could be concerned about the um, two points in the last two games. Maybe he's someone that you don't have to have just because everyone's got him. Um, if you think that he is having a little bit of a downturn in form, potentially. Uh, not much at the back. Like I said, Navas and Nacho came out for Carvajal and the Normand. Um, but I expect it to go back to back to normal for the final. Man, not really many points for the defences here. Right. How do we approach the final? I think it comes down to your overall rank. If you care about your overall rank. I know a lot of people don't. I didn't really until I sort of started doing the channel and getting involved a bit more online. Or where you are in your mini leagues. So if you're winning your mini league and you're trying to block off your opponents, your friends, I think there's a way to approach it. Or if you're chasing in your mini leagues, maybe you need to go a bit more aggressive. We're going to have something else. And then the other bit that I think you need to consider is how many points you're trying to chase. Because if you're trying to just close a smaller gap, you probably don't have to go as crazy, but if you've got a massive gap and it's all or nothing territory, I think there's a, another option for you. So I'm going to go through these options. I've got one where if you're happy to hold your rank or sort of guard your position at the top of your mini leagues or you're in a cash place already. Um, I think the best thing to do is probably go for a mix of teams, get the best players from each of the teams and probably go for the most popular captain pick or the captain pick that you think will be the most popular. So I think probably it's going to be Harry Kane. I think then it'll be followed by Olmo. Um, you might say that Olmo could be the better option, but I think just the fact that there's so many English people that would be playing this and England are in the final, I think that will weigh into it. So I think Harry Kane probably will be the most capped. Olmo, uh, so Kane was 10.5% in the top 1k last week. Olmo was 5.3, so probably follows the same suit. Um, and then I would just, yeah, mix the attack and the defence. So I wouldn't go all in on one one team's defence. I wouldn't go in one team's attack. I would just take the best of both teams, really, if I was in that position where I was trying to hold rank. If you've got a small sort of points gap to make up, I think I would do a similar thing. Have the top picks from each of the teams. But then you could maybe go for a differential captain. So if you were just, I don't know, 10 points behind, um, for example, you're one of your mini league rivals and you know they're going to captain Harry Kane. You just, when you play in these mini leagues with your mates or people you know, sometimes you just know what sort of moves they would go for. And if you think your mate is going to go for Harry Kane and you're probably going to have a similar team, I think, that's when you want to go for a differential captain to try and close the ground. So you could go for an Olmo if you're sure that they're going to go for a Kane. Um, or if you're not sure on the two of them, maybe you could just go for someone even a bit more differential, like a Saka, a Foden, a Bellingham, 
or your mail. But obviously, like you've probably seen with my team the last couple of weeks, when you do go differential, there is that chance that it could backfire. Like me going for Saka this week, thinking that was a good captaincy pick, but coming away with just the one point. So it can happen, uh, but it can work the other way as well. Or if you're adamant, like you're trying to catch up with your mate and you're adamant that he's going to pick Kane, but you're also adamant that Kane will be the best scoring player this week and you want to have him as your captain, then I think you're going to have to have a couple differential players out on the pitch. You can stick with a popular captain um, if you think that's too much of a risk to go against and just go with a few differentials. But again, you've got to try and predict. They've got five transfers as well. We've only got two teams to choose from. So there's a very high likelihood that you're probably going to bring in the same players. Uh, obviously, if we go back to the selected um, ownership percentages on Dream Team, you can see they're all pretty high, like Bellingham 70%, Kane 66 Ruiz 50 Kukurea 46 Yamol, Omo, Omo. If, if you're competing with someone at the top, they're going to have those players in your team. So you need to start going probably down the list. Uh, Sakura at 38. Um, but I think I'd even look, try and look lower than that. I think around the 25% mark, if you can get there, sort of your Williams, um, Foden, and then even more differential, like a Rodri or a Rice, which I know they're not the best scoring players, but you have to probably do it if you're going to catch up and you're going to have the same captain as them. You're going to have to do something that you think they won't do as well because with just two teams to choose from and five transfers, these teams are going to look very, very similar if you're up the top. Um, so this is what I would probably do um, if I was top of the table trying to hold position. I think this is probably what would be the, the best way to go. So probably Pickford in goal and I've gone for Stones. I just think there's not much in it with the England defenders. Um, Pickford. Yeah. I don't think there's that much between him and Unai Simon, really. Um, and then Stones. So I just don't think Walker really has any sort of attacking threat. Now he's playing right centre back. Gay, he's had an assist, but he didn't really do that much going forward. But Stones has popped up a few times with attacking returns throughout Premier League seasons from corners. Probably the biggest threat in the air from us. So I'd probably go for him. Obviously, we know Shaw and Trippier have got it in their locker, but we don't know who's going to play. And there's a chance that they're not going to get the 60 minutes to get the clean sheet if if they do end up keeping a clean sheet. So I would put Stones, but it's up to you. I think there's a bit more choice when you pick from Spain. So from Spain, I would probably go for Cucurea and Laporte. Laporte's had a bonus point in each of his last three matches, and he's had five bonus from five matches. So there's probably a fairly high likelihood that he could get bonus in this one. And I think it does carry some set-piece threat. Um, watching the sort of PPMs, when watching Spain games, his one always seemed to go up a lot quicker. I was actually watching Cucurea on mine or Carvajal, but it's always seemed like Laporte was the one that his PPM was rising quicker on um, FF stuff. So I think he'd probably be the best if you're looking for bonus. Cucurea, 31 points, has the most points out of the Romanian defenders left with a 6.2 average. 12 tackles from five matches is really high. And he's going to have a really big battle on his hands with Bukayo Saka. Um, they've had a battle quite a few times, actually. I think Chelsea, Arsenal, I've seen them have decent battles before. So uh, I can see him getting quite a few tackles in this match. And he's got four bonus points uh, overall as well. Um, the only thing I possibly would change. So if he was going with sort of bonus tackles, I'd go for this too. But if you do fancy Carver Howe, I would say that he's probably got the most goal for it. We've seen him get goals and assists before. He's got a, had a goal in that Croatia match, I think it was, um, earlier in the tournament. And obviously, if you watch the Champions League final, he popped up with a goal in that as well. Um, so I think if you're going to go for goal for it, uh, I'd probably put Carver Howe in, probably in place of Laporte. Um, and also, he's going to be the same side as Jamal, sort of playing on that um, right-hand side, versus... Us, who's got Shaw, Trippier, and not really anyone out on that left-hand side. That's probably our weakest area and Spain's best area. So if you were looking at the combo of Yamal and Carvajal, 
maybe one could assist the other, something like that. But, um, yeah, maybe maybe put Carver Howe in there. Um, midfield, this is a little bit more exciting. So midfield, Yamal, Olmo, I think have to be in there. Um, just based on how good they've performed throughout the tournament. Olmo, like I said, five attacking returns, three goals, two assists, really good form. Um, three matches hitting double figures in a row now as well. Um, and then Yamal, one goal, three assists. Again, really, really good form. That goal in the last game, three, uh, three assists. Yeah, it's, don't have to say much more. He's gonna, They're going to be in the bulk of teams, around 45% owned between them. Then... So that's two from Spain. I probably would go for a five-man midfield. Just the fact that what is there up top? Kane and Morata. Uh, and I think Morata is even negotiable. You could have a four-five-one if you wanted. But so we'll go with Ol- Yamal and Ol- Olmo first. I'd then probably say Jude Bellingham. Uh, I don't think he's looked the best over the last two matches, um, but he's seventy plus percent owned so i think if you're at the top and you're defending you just get him in anyway um he does seem like he's one of these clutch players as well who might not do something or might not have the best of games but pops up with a bicycle kick or a late winner anything like that i do feel like he's one of these who comes up with it uh, which is probably why southgate decided to leave him on in that last game um Despite not doing the best for points, he still had seven PPM in each of his last two matches as well. So, yeah, I, th- I think he's a decent enough pick. The other negotiable spots, um, or th- the one I'd say is non-negotiable would be Harry Kane up next. So I think he's going to be the most capped. I probably would cap in him if I was top of my mini leagues um, and in a good, decent position. He's on pens. He's got three goals, despite not looking great. Um but then these other three spots. So I've got two in midfield and one up top. So Morata, Saka and Ruiz I've put in. Ruiz, again, it would just be an ownership play. I think he's 50% owned now. And I don't think anyone would particularly be in a rush to take him out. They're probably going to be replacing their French players um, so or Dutch players. So I think most people would probably keep Ruiz if they had him. 50%. I don't think he's the best option, but... I'd probably put him in from a defensive standpoint. Saka, 38%. I think this one, we could argue it, really. Um, And then Morata as well. He's just the only other attacker. So it's either a decision between going four in defence or going for an attacker in Morata. Um, 32% owned. Um, If I was chasing and had a sort of a bit of a smaller gap or rank to hunt down, like I said, I'd either go for a differential captain or a differential player. So some of the differential players I'd probably look at. Um, you could, Like I said, I already had Saka in there. You could go for a Foden, who's 22% owned, which is quite a bit less. He's had no attacking returns yet this tournament, but he's had offside goals. He hit the post. He's had goal line clearances. Uh, obviously, didn't start that well when he was playing on that left-hand side at the start of the tournament. But I think this new formation with the, the sort of dual tens behind Kane... I think it suited him much, much better, him playing more centrally. Um, so I still like Foden as a pick this week, um, as a differential. Um, you could look at Williams, 25% owned, one goal, one assist, four bonus points. So you could maybe replace your Ruiz with a Williams. You could replace your Saka or Bellingham to a Foden if you wanted to go a little bit differential on the pitch. Um, or even if you, you think they might bring in one of them you could go rice 15 percent um he's on 30 points which puts him level with Saka which at first glance you probably wouldn't expect and uh, also puts him above Williams and Foden or Rodri 12 percent he's got a four point average which isn't great one goal but he does have 13 tackles and he's one of these players again a bit like Bellingham almost that just seems to come up clutch doesn't he Rodri um did he score like I remember him scoring in the Champions League final for City uh, against Inter. I think that was. He just think oh, I've got memories of Rodri coming up with clutch goals. Uh, I'm pretty sure he scored in the last game of the Premier League season as well, didn't he, against West Ham? So he could be a big differential. I don't think many people would go for him. I don't think they've had one yet, but throughout the tournament, apparently he was on pens. But the only thing I would say is that 
I'm sure Olmo has taken penalties before at, at times, even if Rodri is the taker. Would they give it to Olmo to try and let him get the golden boot if he is a decent penalty taker as well? I'm sure he takes them for Leipzig. I'll have to, um, don't take my word for it. Maybe look that one up. Um, but would they let him take one for the golden boot or would they just be fully focused on the the final going serious? I'm not sure. But Rodri could be a differential there. Um, of course, or you could keep the team the same and then just go for a differential captain, the same as before. So you could go for a team like this, cover up all the bases, but then you might want to go for a Yamal or an Olmo if you don't think your opponent will do that. That's probably what I'd do if I was chasing or if I was defending. I'm not either. I'm miles away. I've got a massive gap to make up. Um, I don't even think the gap that I've got is to... Yeah, I'm, I'm just sabotage at this point i think but if you've got a big gap to make up in your team um i'd be looking towards a block defense now i don't i feel, feel like both teams are going to score but i have to back it like if you're trying to do something different i guess you kind of have to back against what you actually think will happen uh, the odds say that spain are 38 percent chance of keeping a clean sheet and england a 31 percent chance just back who you predict uh, or think is most likely I don't think the odds have come good that often in this tournament, to be honest. Um, again, not much point in Captain in Kane, I don't think. Um, and then, obviously, if you're going to go for a block, do you just go all in? Because is there a point in having an England block and then getting Olmo, Williams, Ruiz, Morata? You, if you play a score you're just going to score against your defense so i know you're, you're hedging your bets there you if, if there's a goal against your defense you're going to get the attack and returns but if there's not you could get the clean sheet but i feel like you're you're hedging your bets there you're sitting on the fence you, you might gain points but the chances are at this point a lot of the people are going to have the goal scorers because the player pool is so small so i think to try and make up maximum ground sink or swim you're going to go massively one way or massively the other i think if you are chasing you just go for something like what i'm gonna do so this is what's happened to my team currently it's been in free fall so in the round of 16 i was at 6.2k which feels a bit better now at this <laughs> looking at where i am now but i was at 6.2k and i kind of made the choice at around that mark to try and start taking a few more risks um, if you watch this channel normally throughout the Dream Team season, I don't take many risks. I try and play as sensible as I can. Uh, but I started to try and play a bit more risky than what I usually do. Uh, try and go for a few differentials, but none of them have paid off. Not one. Not a captain pick, not a differential. Uh, and I've been in free fall. So I've gone from 6.2k at the round of 16 to 34k for the quarterfinals to 57k for the semi-final um, and then after the semi-final I've now fallen even further to 71k um, but I'm not ashamed to uh, well I'm a little bit ashamed I'm not ashamed to show it because this is this is the reality of fantasy football I think you the highs and lows of it um, and I've got to learn what what makes you rise up and what makes you fall and I, I'm pretty sure I've, I've found out what makes you fall this this tournament um, this week yeah, there was no real different. I would have blocked the France defence, I think, if I could have afforded it, but I couldn't. So I went for a mixed defence. Five at the back, I thought not many would do that. And I did think that there'd be quite cagey games in these last semi-finals with not many goals. But I think the clean sheets got wiped pretty much instantly in, in all of the matches. Um, Foden was my differential that I went for last week. And it hasn't quite paid off. And this week, again, felt really, really close um was a frustrating watch i went for saka who has done nothing again um had that disallowed uh, not again sorry he, he returned last week uh, but he, as a captaincy pick for me it's not gone well again yeah unlucky i think that was a very close offside goal but in typical fashion this is what can happen so i've gone for a differential captain in saka when the likes of mbappe and kane hadn't been returning and of course Mbappe assist, Harry Kane goal. It can happen. Like you're going against the best 
players, the best strikers and the best options. Like it's not a surprise when they do return. Um, so that, that's part of it. Um, went for a differential, did not work. And, but obviously that has sent me tumbling down the rankings, uh, which is a 71 gaze. Very, very poor. Um, so what do I do now? So, um, yeah, going to have to take more risks because, I mean, even if I if I chose the best Spain and England players this week and they all done really, really well, um, I'm not going to get anywhere I want to be anyway. So I think I'm going to go for the Hal Mary effort. Um, I've got Navas, who needs to go because he's not going to start. And I've also got Hernandez, Kunde, and Mbappe to replace. So I've only got four players that I have to replace. So I'm going to field an 11, no problem. What would I do for the final? Um, if you're in, I think if you were in my position and wanted to go for a Hal Mary, I would back the favourites with Spain. Um, I'd probably go Spain defence and the, the Spain attackers, you'd have to say, have been better than the England attackers. But looking at my team, I'm already on five England. And although I've got three Spain, one of them is Navas, who's not going to start. So technically I'm on two Spain. So for the position that I'm in, if I'm going to go all in on the team, it has to be England, uh, which I don't mind doing tomorrow. We're going to be watching the game and it's going to be all in for England to win. And it's going to be all in for England on the dream team. So if I was you and I was chasing and you had a balanced team, you could do what you want. I would go Spain if you were really chasing. But hey, we're already in the England position. So this is this is what I'm looking at doing. Um, can't complete the full the full England at the minute. And like I said, I reiterate, I would never usually go this rogue the end dream team i would do like i said or like i showed earlier i'd do something like this with a mixture of pickford um or sorry a mix of england defense spain defense spread your bets get the best attackers from each team that's that's what i'd do in a normal situation but we're not in a normal situation so i'm going to go all in on the england defense pickford walker stones and gehi i have to keep one of my spain uh, i have to keep one of them it would be between Ruiz and Kukurea for me that I'd have to choose between keeping. Um, and I just think that Kukurea is a bit more guaranteed for the points. That battle with Saka, I think he's going to get a lot of tackles. Um, potentially can get a clean sheet, not that it will do anything for me. Uh, whereas I think Ruiz might be a little bit more reliant on goals and assists, which he has got. But with this defence for England, I'm going to back that Ruiz isn't going to get an attack in return. But my boy Kukurea, the one-man Spain team, could still get some tackles. So I'm going to go for Walker, Stones and Gehi at the back. And, and I'm not going to go Shaw or Trippier because I just don't know which one's going to start and if they're going to even get 60 minutes. So for England at the back. In midfield, I mean, you've not got that much to choose from. So Bellingham in there. Um, Saka. And Foden would be the, the two, the three more attacking midfielders. And then obviously Rice and Mainu, uh, I'm going to put in there as well. That's basically the whole midfield for England. Um, uh, yeah, I could, I could put a Yamal, I could put an Olmo, but w really what's the point at this, this, at this point where I am? So it's, it's just a bit of fun now for me at this point. Um, I'd go Spain if, if I could have. And then Harry Kane up front. Uh, I guess you could, I guess you could go for a Watkins or a Palmer, but then you, you're not going to play the minutes game. Bryce has still done well for points from midfield. Minus looked decent. He has he's had a few good long range um, strikes playing for United as well. So yeah, this is how I'm going to go. Uh, and then obviously it's what you want to do with the captaincy. Obviously, Kane would be the best captain, I think from this full England team. Um, but yeah, I, I'm having fun at this point. So I think I'm going to back Foden as another differential captain. See, um, I'm differential enough that I could probably get away with going for Kane. But who do I think would come up with the goods for the final? I think Foden has been so, so close this tournament, but just hasn't quite done it. Bellingham, like I said, could be the one who comes in clutch. Uh, you'd think Bellingham or Kane would be the two that, 
would pop up with that goal. I, I could see it being Bellingham. Maybe I'll swap between Foden and Bellingham, but I think I'm just going to go all in on this sort of differential and go for a, a Foden or a Bellingham and enjoy the final, uh, hopefully. But yeah, this is how I'm lining up. If you, again, if you're not in this same position as me, go back and have a look at the team that I think is a bit more balanced. But this is what I would do or what I'm thinking of doing. Um, that is pretty much it. But I'm going to just shout out uh, the Community League. I, I should have really chucked this in the videos um, earlier on in the tournament, but they were pretty long videos anyway. Uh, so we'll come down to the crunch and read out the top I'm going to say top 10, but I'm going to extend it to the top 11 because I've seen my boy um, Dream Team Tonic James in 11th, but he's joined 10th. So we're going to extend it to um, James here down in joint 10th. So I just wanted to say thank you for everyone that's followed along throughout the Euros. Um, I know my team hasn't gone so well, but hopefully I've helped lay out the information in a way that's helped you. Um, I try to lay out the information so that you can make your own picks. I don't want to pick your team for you. And if you pick the same players as me, you'd have ended up in as bad as a position as me this tournament. So hopefully you've been able to pick better players than me throughout the Euros and you've enjoyed watching along. Um, I've enjoyed just not having that big gap between the Premier League ending and the Premier League starting again. So that's coming around the corner soon. But Community League, we'll start off in... 11th or joint 10th, we've got Jay Fricker, James from the Dream Team Tonic. We've got Mad Dog FC, Jay Maddox. We've got You're Only Here Once, P. Taylor. We've got Free Lions, S. Power. We've got Frostles FC in 7th. Barney's Ballers in 6th, L. Barnes. Um, team name in 5th, could not think of one, A. Casey. 4th, we've got Darun Sandstorm, D. Lovelace. We've got Turkish Delict with T. Symes in third. Some massive scores here as well. Well done, guys. Um, in second, Hacking United AFC M. Cooper. And then in first, Free Lions FC D. Kirk. So well played to all of you guys. Um, we'll be keeping an eye on who wins the final one point between first and second. Uh, so real big battle there for the final. Uh, good luck to you all. You've all smashed it there. Um, let us know in the comments below how you're feeling about that final game and what your plans are. But just be careful because the other guys might be watching. Um, but that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like, uh, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And we'll be going live on the Dream Team Tonic podcast Saturday night. So tonight at 9 p.m. That will be live on YouTube. It will be live on Twitter as well. And so do give us a follow on both of those. And then also it will be out on Spotify a little bit later. So thanks. Um, hope you've enjoyed the Euros and do subscribe because we'll be straight back into the normal Dream Team game pretty soon. Apparently the normal Dream Team game is going to be out next week. So maybe I'll give myself a few days rest first, uh, maybe a week's rest, and then we'll get straight back into it. So cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll see you on, well, see you next season. Bye-bye.